Hey, what's going on? Welcome back. Patrick here from All Things Mathematics and moving on to the next example. This one's going to be dealing with continuity, a uh, pretty standard one that we've done lots of examples like in the lecture videos where we have to find constants a and b here. Notice that they are within the functions here within the piecewise function such that the piecewise function is going to be continuous at this x value of 1 because notice that this, these three functions, right, they're meeting at that x value of 1. And so we want to know what's the value of a going to be, what's the value of b going to be, so that they're going to be, or so that the function, the entire piecewise function, is going to be continuous at that meeting point of x equals 1. Now, just to give you a quick uh, visual of what's going on, notice that at an x value of 1, we are told that this point is defined, this y value is 2, right? So at an x value of 1, we know that for this function, there is a point right there, like that, okay? And so what's going to happen is this function here, okay, in green, is defined for all the x values less than 1, okay? Now, I'm not sure fully how this is going to look like. It's going to depend on the a value. It's a rational function, but let's just, I'm going to show it as a line. I know it's not a line, but just to give you a visual let's say that this function hypothetically does look like this, right? So for it to be continuous at this x value of 1, we know that the limit of this function, of this green function, as x approaches 1 from the left side, we know that it has to equal 2, right? It has to equal that y value of 2. So we could say the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side of this function, 3 over um, x plus 2 minus a, we know that that limit has to equal 2, right? It has to approach that y value of 2 right there. Now, this function, root x plus b, again, I know it's a square root function, has a certain shape. Let's just, I'm just going to uh, visually show it as like a line right here. So let's just hypothetically say it does look like that. But no matter what way it looks like, no matter what shape it takes, if the entire piecewise function is going to be continuous at that x value of 1, then we know that the limit of this function as we approach 1 from the right side, from the positive side, that limit has to equal 2. So we could also state that the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side of root x plus b has to equal 2 as well, right? And if both of those functions are approaching that y value of 2 from both sides, then we know that the entire piecewise function is going to be continuous at that x value of 1. And so with these two limits now, we could set up two different expressions and we're going to have two unknowns, right? We need two equations if we have two unknowns to solve for, so we could use substitution or elimination. So now we could just go into, okay, on this uh, left side here, we're going to plug in that x value of 1 for x, so that would be 3 over 1 plus 2 minus a has to equal 2. So this would be 3 over 3, so basically 1 minus a is equal to 2. And would you look at that? we actually can solve for the a value directly. We actually don't even need to do any um, substitution or uh, elimination. And that was actually obvious at the beginning. I should have noticed because these um, functions are not a combination of a and b. But sometimes you will have to do substitution elimination. I did a bunch of examples like that in the lecture videos. So make sure you go over those as well. And then over here, with this limit, uh, I could plug in that x value of 1. Oh, let's not put the equal sign there. So this would be like root 1 plus b. That has to equal 2. To get rid of the root, let's square both sides. So that means 1 plus b would have to equal 4. b is 3. Right? And that would be the two solutions, right? So a is negative 1, b is 3. If you plug those back into that original piecewise function, if you were to graph it, you would notice that the piecewise function would be continuous at that x value of 1 because all three pieces at an x value of 1 would have a y value of 2. 
And that's a wrap for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you want to see more videos like this, please go to my website, allthingsmathematics.com. Over there, all of the videos are organized by chapter, by section. If you feel like you need tutoring at any point, you could also hit me up. My contact details are on the website. Enjoy your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.